picked the wrong weight and quit sniffing glue. back it's week three on the time machine and uh, I think we're gonna see some significant uh, construction this week I'm still uh, up in the air about the mechanics of how everything's gonna work but I think we can start taking uh, control of some of the uh, the finishes and the basic construction of how this is all gonna go together now I'm starting off the day with a little bit of reinforcement and that is the uh, JB weld inside of this uh, control arm mechanism where the uh, the pop meter is and uh, I'm solidifying everything now over the weekend I was able to adjust the programming by using Wayne's wonderful instruction and uh, that has allowed me to sorry I've got a sneeze well good morning everybody it is week three welcome back it's week three on the uh, time machine build and over the weekend, I noodled and thought and thought some more about the colors for the dish. And I'm very happy with what I've come up with this morning. I just put in a mixture of titanium gold and copper here to give me a, just a light, a light creamy copper. Now, you can still see those build lines. You can still see them. They're, they're going, well, they're going this way. I'm trying to do this in camera, so it's uh, b backwards. Um, but again, I'm saying the uh, the hope is that once I get the decals and everything on here, it's going to help disguise some of that. The important part is how clean this looks back here, and I'm very happy with that. Um, I want to go back in now and re-darken these cross members. I've got something coming in the mail today from Amazon uh, that I've ordered, which is a plate that's gonna attach right here and that's where the uh, I'll turn the camera to it there you go um, it's a plate that's gonna sit something like this and have the adjustment or the uh, connection to the uh, horizontal rod that's gonna go through there and I'm looking forward to that once I know how big that's gonna sit on there then I can go ahead and repaint this black area there's a decal that's gonna that's meant to go in that area i don't know if it's gonna work with the plate i might have to sacrifice it i might have to cut it down smaller to make it fit on the plate certainly i'm going to paint that plate because i think it's a silver uh it may be a chrome that's going to have to be repainted to a gold but uh now that this color here is nice and dry i think i can go in and repaint these uh, cross members to the darker color. The other thing I'm working on today is solidifying everything that's happened in the uh, the uh, let's get back over here on the uh, control box. I've got I, I've shortened my handle down now to where it will work with the uh, the key that fits in it that's meant to go here. Um, I need to shorten that down a little bit I think I don't want that to snap off because that's very delicate I might end up rebuilding this thing out of a out of a metal out of a metal just to make it fit better let's try it with this pin this pin is a little bit more substantial so we run it forward and the lights are doing their blinky thing and I run it back down to the neutral off position and then I run it backwards and it does the same blinky thing and now here's where the mystery comes in because and there's the off position because these wires here are going to be controlling the motor that's going to spin the whole Megillah at the back. I, I, I'm going to have to kind of take them as they are because I desperately want to close up this whole thing. And that means putting on the end caps. 
the end caps like that, and actually getting it attached to the frame at the front of the uh, time machine. Um, so the what's going to happen, and I'm going to do all that long before I'm working on the back end where the actual motor is going to be. So what I'm going to have to do um, is try to mock up what this is going to look like with this board. This is the motor board. This is the motor. This is, may not. This may or may not be the motor I end up using. This is the uh, power coming into the motor board. This power will uh, will come out. The uh, it'll be tapped off of the main power going into the base. One set of wires will go up and power this. That's what this connection is all about. Um, but these two wires come back off of this board, off of the Arduino board and they actually do some controlling here of the uh, function and those are the those are two wires that need to be run back through the rail we've already got those buried we're good to go on that the problem is if this for some reason doesn't work the motor the right way i'm kind of uh i'm kind of screwed because i'm getting ready to close this up which means i'm going to lose access to the arduino board the Arduino board is going to be, the only way I could do that and keep access would be if I took this panel that I've got cut out and rather than gluing it back, if I put it back with magnets or something, something temporary so that I could remove it and get access to the Arduino board if I needed it. But I don't know if that's going to be, I mean, that's going to be a lot of work and I don't know if it's going to be worth it in the long run. Uh, for you know, if, if this if I can get this to work without um, needing to keep access to that board, then I'm all for it. So we're just going to see how it goes. We're going to see we're going to start putting things together. Um, you know, if I left that off, that would that would be a uh, that would solve a multitude of sins because here's the thing. I need to attach, let's get this board out of the way. I need to attach this to those two side rails. And if I could attach those to the side rails and still have this openable and only glued to, yeah, you know what? I think that's got some merit to it. Alrighty, something I've been wanting to do for quite a while but haven't gotten around to it yet was to get a coat of black paint on this. Um, and I did that, uh, well, I just got done doing that. So what I've decided to do, now that all of this is in and more or less solidified and seems to be working like it should, is that I'm can gonna, I can go ahead and... Um, glue in the end cap and then push all of that through onto the side rail and this wire here that has all the power running to it I can kind of make that connection I need to shorten it for first but make that connection and kind of tuck it in I think leaving this this bit off is going to help when it comes to making all of the uh, the connection oops that needs to go this way making all of those connections and then we can just clean up the seam at the very end yeah that's gonna sit like that yeah we can go ahead and clean up the seam at the end well uh, the painting on this on the dish is coming along very nicely um, We've got the, all of the colors. I just reinforced the uh, the crossbar color here. And in the mail today, we got these uh, plates in. This was something that I had ordered, oh, just, I think it was either on Thursday or Friday, but uh, just real real, uh, uh, real quick service there from Amazon. But this is the mounting plate. What it is is a uh, piece that we're going to screw onto the plate there. And then we can put our horizontal shaft into that and tighten it down with this screw here set screw and that's what's going to uh, start the mechanism and start the uh, the grand turning as it were now I need to make sure that this is exactly in the center 
and uh, I can do that by putting a uh, post up through there. I'm scratching up the back of this. I need to be careful not to do that so that I can put one last coat of the gold over top of the back of it and clean that up. Um, and then maybe put a clear coat over top of that to, uh, to uh, protect it. But what I need to do is take a uh, nice, uh, well here, like this, a nice, uh, nice rod that I can put down through it and then center this on it mark out where the holes need to be and go ahead and screw this plate down so that I'll have a good centered uh, mounting plate. Good morning everybody it's Tuesday and we're gonna start the day with a little bit of experimentation now this is truly the best part about having a spare dish if you will having a dish that I will not be needing although uh, I got a very excellent suggestion that I should make a clock out of this and I'm certainly going to do that but before that I am going to uh, use this as a mock-up for the uh, the turning mechanism now I went out to uh, Lowe's after I, I got back from the chiropractor this morning uh, I feel like a new man um, uh, got rid of the last vestige of the stiff back that I brought back from Wonderfest so that's gone newly newly cracked and feeling good so um, stopped in at Lowe's picked up a couple of the small uh, or a couple bags of small screws and uh, some brass tubing and a long threaded bolt and what I want to do is see just how practical any of this is going to be when it comes time to uh, make this thing spin. Now, this is the brass. This is the threaded rod. This is the piece that I got yesterday from Amazon. This is the, uh, the plate that will be replacing the, the plate that uh, is part of the kit. It comes with two little grub screws in it that you use to tighten down which is also going to be a just a spanking good idea when it comes to uh, working with this because you can set the whole thing up and then attach the dish kind of at the end and you're not forced to uh, work with this cumbersome dish before you really need to so we're going to just push that in now all this stuff is temporary of course it's only here to um, serve as an example of how things are going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this plate. That's one of the things that I am trying out is how easy it's going to be to attach the plate. Um, got some small brass wood screws. I probably will end up nipping off the end of those because I still think they are a bit long, but half inch is about the shortest you could find at Lowe's without going to a, a specialty woodworking place to find shorter like jewelry box screws but uh, I need to get my drill out and drill for these screws so we'll do that next okay so I've already run this test once off camera but I want to show you how it turned out um, this is the old dish granted the un old unbalanced dish uh, my main concern was this tiny motor and whether this tiny motor was going to have enough guts to to spin this big dish and I have to tell you that uh, it does as a matter of fact it spins it too fast we're gonna have to uh, you can see how much my hand is shaking here but that's just this tiny motor on a straight drive without going through a bevel gear but you can see how much wobble and shake there is there that does not bode well uh, for putting it in a kit and not ha and having it not shake now we need to try this with the balance dish and see if it's any better I think the motor's too is too fast, frankly. That would be the top speed. But that's way too much.
but I've only got two screws holding it in the plate because you know no sense going overboard I just wanted to make sure that it was uh, in the middle alrighty we're gonna try the same experiment now with the good dish we're bringing out the good dishes for this now I've already tried this off stage of course I'm not gonna show you a big blowing up explosion on you know without trying it first but uh, here's what it looks like uh, see that's tough there's there's no switch on this and I'm having to touch the wires to the battery and keep everything stable at the same time which is not how it should work there we go now you can already tell that's a little smoother I'm holding it in my hand and I can remember from the one I was doing the other one that it was jerking it around a whole lot more than it is now. So this is a little more stable. Uh, still not completely smooth. But I think this, was in, this is within working parameters. Whereas the other one was just way too wobbly. This I think we can reinforce enough. Now we're going to put a right angle on this and I'm going to work with Wayne to see if we can, obviously this is way too fast, we're going to have to slow this thing down. And of course the slower it goes, the more stable it is. So I'm thinking at a nice slow speed, something like that, it's not going to be any problem at all. Okay, well today was an important day. Uh, I got the, the, the missing bit of code I needed from Wayne. I had this jumper on the board here that I... I still had it on there. It came that way. I didn't know it wasn't wasn't supposed to be there. So once that once we took that jumper off, these two uh, cable these two points started acting completely normal. So all I need to do now is go back into the code and tweak the numbers on the uh, speeds so that I can figure out I can dial in how fast I would like the wheel to be spinning uh, at the slow speed and at the fast speed. And then I can close this up. That was the only thing that was keeping me from closing that up because once that board is programmed and set and locked, I can't get back into it. So that's why I wanted to make sure the coding was was the final, final, final version. But I always like to end the day on a showy note, a sexy note, a, uh, a look what I did today note. So I went ahead and painted the uh, the big housing here. Now this is, <coughs> there, are, there are versions of this that I've seen that are a hunter green. There are versions of this that I've seen that are a almost horrid uh, teal. A bright horrid teal, almost like a 50s uh, uh, appliance teal, which I don't think was any good. And it does certainly does not fit the aesthetic of the rest of the... Um, uh, I will say the jewel tone colors. Now there's a lot of garish color up in this mechanism up here. Uh, sort of like how this is bright green. And there's some golds and reds that happen up in there. But I opted for a, a mixture of sea blue. It's mostly sea blue with just a little bit of uh, regular green. This is part green. So it's some sea, a lot of sea blue with a part green. And then, uh, as I was cleaning out the brush, I put just a little bit more of the part green and sprayed just the highlight down the center. So the, cut, the sides are still mostly sea blue, but it's uh, a completely blue-green type of deal. And I think that fits in the jewel tone aesthetic with the burgundy seat and the dark brown wood and the gold fixtures. Uh, I think that's going to work out much better. So we're going to let that dry. Also, the same color goes on the top of the uh, control box here. Now, the sides will be gold, but the very top of that was the same green color. So I've got that painted. We're going to let all that paint dry. We're going to come back to it first thing in the morning. And uh, when we do, we are going to finish, uh, now that I've got my wiring, or my wiring set, we could finish this, this bit of wiring and dial in those numbers like I just said and uh, we'll be we'll be back on track Good morning welcome to Motor City it's Wednesday <coughs> I'm working on the uh, the guts the mechanics the actual spinniness of the uh, the time wheel the big dish on the back and I've got three motors here that I have brought out for this purpose now 
uh, through the generous help of Wayne yesterday I was able to find the bit of the Arduino code that I needed to change to alter the speeds of this and also the, the big secret was taking off this little jumper attachment that was uh, short circuiting two of the posts or joining them together that didn't need to be done that way um, what I've got is a very telling tale here because these two motors I would like to use either of these but they uh, they don't have any gear reduction on them they are simply the motors that are being fed straight power from this motor control board which you cannot see because it's there you go because it's not in camera here we go um, when I attach these motors to this board they spin wildly they are very very quick motors and like I said they've got no gear reduction on them this smaller motor that I've ordered from Amazon is to my eye under cranked underpowered for such an endeavor I'm afraid it would burn out but it has the gear reductions on it that I want so that when uh, I put power to this thing and I'm going to do that quickly and you're going to see by looking at the little piece of tape here notice the uh, the piece of tape at the top of that post now that's good it's going to move at two different speeds first it's slow and that's the slow version of the dish that's the fast version of the dish you can hear the change in pitch of the motor I know that this has enough oomph to spin the dish because we tried that yesterday and I know that hooking this straight to the dish it will do the job my concern comes in longevity I, I would much rather use this small motor simply because it's going to be easier to mount but I'm afraid of the longevity of that motor um, maybe what I, maybe what I need to do is put it under strain for a while and see if it burns out I don't think that it's going to but that's my fear I think these are beefier but my conundrum is that there's no way that I have currently without going out and trying to research and do a lot of you know brain work that I'm not really suited for uh, to find the best way to reduce the gears you know reduce the speed now to me that that may be a good speed for the uh, the top speed but I think that that is still a little quick on the slow speed again that's off slow and fast off slow fast so I think I might want to uh, lower both of those numbers so the slow is slower and the fast is even a little slower than that once that wheel gets a spin in the uh, the wobble really starts to become more pronounced so and I think in scale for what it is when it's at the slow speed I still want to be able to see you know the detail of the dish as it's spinning it really shouldn't start to get too blurry until we get to the top speed so uh, we're gonna I'm gonna tinker with the with the uh, let's get back out I'm gonna tinker with the code a couple more times because I desperately want to close this thing up today I want to get it, it attached to the side rails and I can't do that until I am ready to uh, be done with coding on the board because every time I make a change I have to upload it to this board and there's the jack for uploading I cannot uh, I cannot make that accessible uh, much beyond well I could do maybe this half and attach the power to it but I need to get access to that side so uh, that's that's the head scratcher Okay, we've hit a bit of a roadblock, and here's where I'm at. This is all well and good. This is at the fast speed. What happens is, 
when we put this on, well, let's just say we turn it off. And then we want it to run at the slow speed. You hear that? It just sits there and whines. There's not enough oomph in the torque of this low motor to spin this at a slow speed. It's okay once you give it a little more gas pedal and hit it to the high speed. It works just fine. But that's only half the battle. The idea is to have two speeds on this thing. And... I mean, this not too loud. I, I'm, I'm not objecting to this, the noise. And the balance is pretty good. And everything else will be fine. That, that's the fast speed. I would just like to be able to have that going at a slower speed as well. As soon as you put it to the, you know, the, the neutral position, the, because it's geared, it stops it. It's not like it's free flowing, and you know, or, or uh, it has a clutch on it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. As soon as the gears, uh, as soon as the power is turned off, the gears stop it, and it doesn't gently go down to stop it. It stops. But when you push it either way to start it back up again on a slow speed. It just makes that noise until you go to the high speed. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I either need to find a beefier motor that can or that has lower torque that can handle the, the weight of this at the slow speed or we need to find a way to use one of these larger motors that we've already got in hand. We need to find some sort of gear reduction set up for those. And there's off again. Okay, here's what I'm learning. That's off. That's at the you know that's in the central position. Um, whether you could see the controller, the controller's down here. The controller's down in front of me. That's the controller in front of me. Now, that is at the neutral position. If I put it on slow speed, you can hear it whining. If you turn it to the high speed, and again, we take the weight off of it, so that it's spinning like that. That's it with no weight on it. And we're turning it down to the lower speed. Yeah, if you look at it from the back, you can see how uneven that is, but I can live with that. That's not bad. I have to say, that's... Hmm. Yeah, I still stand that we need a bigger motor, but if you, would, if you are going to change the parameters... Sorry, Mr. Compressor. If you're going to change your mission statement that says... You have to be able to start it slow from the slow position. That doesn't work. But if you start it from the fast position and then move it back to slow, it will it will rotate in slow. It just won't uh, do that from a dead stop. Hmm. That could be splitting the hair. That could be... That could be... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Have to, I'll have to consult the brain trust about this. Morning, folks. It's Thursday. It's the gateway to the weekend. Hooray! Um, you'll see there's not a lot on the table today because I am going to try to go, go back to the route of 
of doing the small manageable chunks and uh, not sprawling over the entire kit. Now the uh, the sad fact is I am in kind of a holding pattern because uh, at least on this project because I am waiting for the mechanical pieces to start arriving the uh, metal pieces from Phil um, there's precious little I can do I would desperately love to close this up I've been saying that all week but I, I still don't think I can because I um, I haven't quite got my motor sorted uh, I think we may be able to use this motor if we can keep it in this orientation where it's straight up and using the bevel gears to go to the back. Um, if we cannot, then uh, I might have to swap out a motor. And the problem with that is I might have to change the programming on the Arduino board if that happens. And I can't get to the Arduino board without uh, if I close this up. So that's my that's my sticking point. Um, there are a couple things I can do and that's what I'm going to concentrate on today. First of all I can build the little box where the switch and the power jack are going to live and that gets mounted to the underside of the uh, the main plate. I can go ahead and do that. Um, I might even uh, go back into finish painting the dish because one way or the other that dish is pretty much done uh, Dishes are done man uh, I'm going to uh, have to make myself happy with that because that dish is going to be what it's going to be and I can because of the way everything is designed I can take that dish off of the backing plate well hold on let me, let me just let me go get it Okay, the dish is back. Now, you can see the fact that I'm putting it on this nice fluffy backing material. They'll tell you I want to keep, I have recovered that and I have uh, put a, clo a clear coat over it. But I want to protect that as much as I can. So, no sense subjecting it to undue scratchage. I can remove this plate. Uh, even when it is attached, everything is up like this. I don't have to, uh, there's a quick connect, disconnect here. There's a couple little uh, set screws in here that I can take off. So even as I am building this, the plate can kind of can kind of go on at the last minute. So this plate is done with the exception of there's one more black accent that needs to be painted here. And um, I can mask off and get that painted. And then we're ready for decals on this. And that may be how I finish up the day. Is I may be gloss, gloss coating this. And we could be putting decals on this dish tomorrow. And that would be a nice fun showy way to end the week. Because this dish is what's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Whether the whole thing works or not. This dish is going to get. Uh, I mean it doesn't. Nothing involves repainting this dish. So. That's something we certainly could do today is put the black on here and then uh, gloss it and get it ready for decals. That's one thing we can do. The other thing is like I was mentioning I can go ahead and put the box under here that the uh, power switch and the uh, jack is going to, that's where that's going to live. And then I can run, a, run wires out to, to uh, the one rail here. I can run, I could put the rails in place, I really could. Uh, it's going to be cumbersome to work on this thing no matter how I do it. So uh, I could go ahead and put the rails on and then attach this to the rails. That's something that could be done. Uh, that would just leave this plate to go on after the uh, uh, Arduino situation is sorted. So that's something I could do. Certainly I think over the weekend I'm going to go ahead and flock the front of this because it's going to be resting the, you know, for those two days. It might as well be doing something productive while it's doing that. So I'm lining up the little things that I can do. Uh, there, are amount of, there are an amount of decals that go on the big green housing here, but I haven't even started working on that housing as far as fitting the motor and, the, and all the mechanics, so I don't want to uh, jinx myself by getting too far down the road in case I have to damage that housing. The last thing I can work on today is I've remade the key. This is the the drive key, the thing that George carries around in his pocket that makes the whole thing work. 
it's got one flaw in it it's all made of clear resin that right that right there see that little joint right there that is destined to break that is just so fragile that I don't want to trust it so what I've done is I've taken a piece of wire that is that same and I say wire this is like piano wire this is this is heady stuff and um, I, it is the same circumference there and when I fit it down into the slot it is much more stable than that piece of resin would ever be and uh, all I need to do at this point is to cut the top of this off and put a new crystal on it and we will be good to go with it being done so those are small obtainable things that can be done of course the other big news is today I'm working on a, a, a vinyl order so uh, I've got to get that in amongst everything else I've got to get that plotted and packaged and ready to go out so uh, it's gonna be one of those frantic Thursdays around here at Happy Acres so strap in if you hear the noise in the background that's why okay so after a, a bit of tricky masking I have cleaned off the center and golded it all up this using the uh, the gold leaf Tamiya and then after this is dried I will go back in I will mask the inside and I will paint that black ring that goes around here plus on the tops of these veins so, there you go adding yet another metallic color to this dish that has what about six already well if I were a reckoning man I would reckon that it, this is ready to be gloss coated I've got all of the uh, all of the black and the gold in I'm not going to paint this until I know what color the rest of the metal is going to be I kind of like it chrome but I can see painting it if needs be but I think we're ready to put a nice gloss coat on here and get ready for decals in the morning not going to do it not going to gloss coat the back no decals going on there so I don't need to worry about that I do need to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with this I think it's going to have a lot to do with whatever shaft ends up coming through there uh, and then some sort of decorative cover on top of that but yeah I think we're ready to put a gloss coat on this now I've been using this piece as a hanger so I'll just go out and hold it and hit it with the spray all right we finally got a quiet moment it's friday it's the last work day of the week it's the last work day on week three of the time machine and like i said i finally got a quiet moment with the in between plots so let me catch you up um this is the work i've done on the time key uh this is some of that uh steel stick which is the jb weld uh epoxy putty this is the steel reinforced putty not the white stuff and uh, you, what I've got is a, a, a metal uh, piece of uh, wire or rod going down through the center of that. And that is my new, I'll paint this up with a nice marble finish and that will be my new time key. But this is the original one as a comparison. The crystals on the top were generously provided by Wayne of World of Wayne. And um, that, is, that is job one the uh, key goes in here and I just think will give me a much better leverage than the uh, stock key not that there's anything wrong with the stock key I am just wary of that not snapping so that's job one uh, the big job job two the big showy sexy thing that I'm going to do today is I'm going to put these decals down on the inside of the dish and then we will be able to pick this dish up and put it aside until we are finally ready to have the rest of it done uh, what I've done is to make sure or to see what kind of shape these decals are in as I just cut a little scrap piece off of the decals and I am going to try that out in a cup of water just to see how well it separates and whether or not it's going to crack and all this all the stuff that I need to know before I go on to the irreplaceable work of doing or doing the work with the irreplaceable decals shall we say okay the good news is the decals are fine they are not uh, overly cracky they're not fragile they'll they'll move around uh, I do have a concern about uh, the size of them so the question is going to be to that we need to trim off as much excess carrier film as possible I think I'm going to start with the 
skinny ones around the edge first and then do the four big massive ones afterwards. These are fairly well trimmed down. I don't want to make them so fragile that they're going to flop around. So we're going to start. We're just going to put one in the water, pick it out, put it down on one of these quadrants and then repeat as necessary. So uh, I did learn that I probably need to leave them soak a little longer than your typical decal. Generally you want to let the decal sit in the water until the paper, it's you know, it's going to curl up as soon as you put it in the water. You want to kind of let it flatten itself back out before you take it out of the water. See that's that's curving up. We're going to let it uh, fold itself back out and then while that is happening I'm going to take a uh, Q-tip here cotton swab of your choice let's get rid of this post I think that's going to be in the way okay I'm just going to uh, wet down the area where the decal is going to be kind of get that all ready I have not tried this particular decal with either of the setting solutions I want to see if that's going to be necessary because these are all big flat areas it's not like it has to wrap around a corner or anything so we're going to let the try to go without the setting solution okay we're going to pull this out of the water kind of lay it where next to where it's going to be pull up a chair and then see how it goes I need to get the camera out of here uh, let's see if I set it over here it's still going to be visible whilst I'm working I'll do the first one of these on camera but then probably remove the camera afterwards so I don't want to uh, force this I'm gently rubbing the decal and the paper against my thumb and forefinger to see if it's moving on the uh, paper I don't want to force it because that's how you get rips. Now I'll put it back in the water for a little bit longer. And let's see, where, where's that? Oh, here it is. I just had it. Continue to moisten this area. Pull this back out, see if it's any better. Any slipperier, any slidier. It's one of those things that once it starts to go, it will go. So uh, I moved it a little bit on the backing paper. I'm just dunking it in again to get some water behind the decal. That'll help force it off of the paper. Here we go, kids. Here we go. Now because this is so long and uh, skinny, don't want to run the risk of it folding up on itself. So let me do this and pull the paper out. Move the paper off to the side. Now a lot of people will 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 uh, not use an exacto to move a decal around. I will, but I will use the back of the blade that's not as sharp as the front obviously because I think it gives me the precision that I'm looking for as far as being able to move things around now this decal I'll have to say is working very nicely but it's designed for the kit part and this is a printed dish so while it is the same scale and everything it may not have the exact same contour so I am taking this as a best approximation. I am just flattening out the decal so that it has no wrinkles in it. But knowing that it might not match the arc as precisely as it would on the kit part that it's designed for. Okay, now that's going to work nicely. I just need to get a dry Q-tip and suck up all of this water. This is a lot of water here, so I might have to get a paper towel. Hold the phone. Okay, I'm just using a shop rag to blot 
the excess water off. There you go, that's laying down quite nicely. I want to uh, again take the dry end of a Q-tip and I'm just pushing out the trapped water. My chief concern is that these decals are so thick that they uh, will show a, a step. Um, so I am making sure that I scooge out any trapped water so that this will lay nice and flat. And then once it has dried, I will hit it with another clear coat. And that generally will get rid of uh, the appearance of the carrier film. I want the, the dish to have a satin finish when it's all done. It's metallic after all. It shouldn't be flat. But I don't want a high gloss either. I don't want lights bouncing off of this. So uh, I am gauging the top part of these arcs and seeing that they are consistently the same distance away from the gold edge here. And I would like to make sure that the, uh, the little brown line here is meeting as, as close as possible to the uh, vertical edge here. It's a little bit off of this one. That tells me the whole decal might want to go that way. So let me work on this and then I'll come back to you when I've got the other three in. Well, the outside ring is in, looking lovely. That's going to dry, of course, but uh, those went in pretty darn easily. I am, uh, I'm not aghast, but uh, because this whole kit has been pretty good high quality, but I am pleasantly, pleasantly surprised how well that went in. So now it's time to chuck in the big ones. Now, the secret to this is going to be in how close we trim the uh, paper to the outside of it without I'm not going to try to get in here and cut all that out That uh, I think lies that way lies madness But I uh, definitely want to get as close to the outside edge as possible now you center it in the remaining space here and there is a, uh, a Floret here that is about center and that should point that should help you line that up between that and just kind of fitting it in the triangle that's left. Okay, so the first big quadrant decal is in. The quadrant decal triticale uh, is in. And the, the only way I found to satisfactorily do it is just to kind of put the whole plate out in front of you and kind of do one of these things. You know, the old thing where the artist sticks a thumb out in front of them as they're painting. That's I can zoom back out. Uh, um, that's the only way to do it because the decal itself is mostly symmetrical. And I will tell you that the person whoever drew these up is a bloody Rembrandt because these are beautifully rendered. Uh, the only unfortunate thing about them is that they've got uh, a drop shadow as part of the design. And do you count when you're putting your decal down? Is the de is the drop shadow part of the design or is that something in, in addition to the design so I'm trying to keep the whole decal centered and uh, including that drop shadow which means the image itself you know the blue line see that the it's basically some blue lines with brown drop shadows and this drop shadow here needs to be as far away from your post as this blue line over here and that's where I'm kind of making myself happy with my centering because my brain wants to put the blue lines all, you know, symmetrical and then let the drop shadow fall where it wants to. But then that I tried that and it made it look like everything was off to the side too much. So uh, to center it back up, I just have to treat the whole image as the thing that needs to be centered not the the blue line part of that if that makes any sense so oh the, and another thing i did which i thought was very helpful was even though i am not cutting out these areas here 
I am putting a little slits in them just straight up slits with the exacto to cut the carrier film and what that does is it helps the not only does it help the decal lay in the contours because it gives it a relief cut but it also gives me a handy place to squeegee the water out from behind the decal because the decal wants to collect any any decal this big wants to collect water behind it and having those little slits in there gives a, a, a quick way to uh, squeegee out the trapped water. So that's one down. We've got three more of these to go. And then we set this aside for a day before we top coat it. All right, the second decal is down. And I determined early on that uh, rather than going around, when I did the outside edge ones, I did this one, then the one next to it, then the one next to it, then the one next to it, because I wanted to line up these edges. Well, when I did this one first, I uh, decided that it would be better off if I did the one opposite it so that uh, I could eyeball them together against each other rather than doing to the next one, the next one, and the next one in a, in a clockwise manner. Um, no time jokes, uh, puns intended there. But uh, just by looking at it, I could determine what is up and straight and up and down with it. So now I'm just a matter of putting in the last two, and this will be a done thing. And here is the final dish. Now all we need to do is put a clear coat over this of a satin. I don't think I want to keep this high gloss, and I don't think I want a flat coat, since it's supposed to be metallic. So we'll go with the satin on it, which will match the satin coat that's on the back. And we will put this aside until the very end of the build, when we will attach this to whatever ends up being the rest of the build seems in my haste I forgot a decal and that is the one that goes on the center here now I've got this big plate that attaches to the center so that's going to cover up a lot of this decal but it's going to give me a good opportunity to see exactly how the uh, metallic is going to look because this decal has a uh, metallic finish to it and uh, the rest of the ones I've done previously have just been paint so, uh, as I said, it will give me a, a new perspective. I'm looking for my wire cutters. I don't see them. Oh, here they are. I need to uh, lengthen this or make another screw for the plate that is longer than what I've got. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So, and then I replace it with a longer screw. Stop it, you. Okay. Every time I touch one, and the one next to it jumps out. Okay, those are the four screws that I need to put back in. That's the one that's too short. Um, the thing about this is, it's slightly off-center. Uh, I don't know whether that was a flaw in the printing or what, but... Uh, my uh, my center my outside ring here is slightly off, so I'm thinking that's going to be exaggerated by seeing how this looks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I like that. Then I can just poke the new screw holes through that. Yeah, I like that. Let me go get a, uh, well, I can start with this. See, that's looking pretty good. Just blot this off. That actually will help me cent recenter this. That's not bad for a blind guess. When I made the uh, mask for the painting this gold in the center, I more or less made a blind guess at the size of it. Well, not blind, not completely blind. I uh, did use a ruler up next to it, but I, my guess was pretty, uh, my measurement was pretty accurate, shall I say. Now I'm just gonna poke a hole in the center 
and what that's going to do is that's also going to let, let loose the trapped air slash water that is in the center of this decal. That actually does show me where the holes for the uh, plate are in pretty good. I'm sorry, I'm just talking to myself here. You, you uh, pay no attention. Okay, we blot that off, and we'll be good to go. There's that center one. You can still see the big old trapped air underneath that. Now that I know that's in a good place, I can poke the other three holes that were for the, or the other four holes that are for the screws. Okay, now we set the whole thing aside to dry. Okay, so I pulled out one more tiny part to put a decal on because, you know, decaling is like eating potato chips. It's hard to start it, stop at just one. But uh, the, the uh, metallic de decals have intrigued me. I didn't know how, uh, how good they were, frankly, or how good they were going to be, particularly over dark colors because... Uh, they do have to go over the dark colors, the black on the front panel. There's a gold decal that goes right here, and I want that to show up. And there is uh, a gold pinstripe that goes on the dark green uh, side, side of the dark green uh, box at the back. So I looked on the decal sheet, and there was one decal that was A, metallic, B, duplicate, and see small enough to really try out and that is the uh, gold uh, pinstripe that goes on the very front of the uh, time rotor there's a there's a, a thing in front well this is what it is I mean and I wanted to see how good that gold was going to look on the dark green and I think it's going to be just fine now I need to put a, co a clear coat over top of that to seal it in but I also need to let it dry for a while before I do that. But I was concerned uh, about the uh, the gold printing, and I need not be the uh, JBot who print, who printed these has done a an ex a superlative job. I cannot come up with enough uh, flowery language to describe how wonderful his decals are for this kit. They are simply magnificent. So uh, that was another successful experiment. This is ready to go now. Um, and that's pretty much, I think, how we're going to finish our week. Let me see. Today is Friday. It's late afternoon. Uh, what's the last thing we could do? You know, I, I could flock this today. Um, there's a, there's a, a value in getting that flocked. It will have the whole weekend to dry. The next step is to really uh, put the golden rails down on the both sides here, and um, I think I think I can go ahead and flock that and not worry too much about bumping into it. If not, I can let it dry good and well, and then put a protective uh, cloth over it when I'm working. So let me get the flocking stuff out. And real quickly, we'll just take care of this. Okay, this is going to be a little bit of a uh, quicker, dirtier version of the flocking that was done last time. I've got the bowl out. I've got my flock loaded in the flocking tube. Putting on the flocking adhesive. Um, got the bowl ready to put this in to do the dirty deed. I am using again one of the cheapest brushes I could find because I will throw it out immediately upon finishing this flocking job. Going right up to the edge of the uh, studded outline here. I have painted an undercoat of that area 
uh, the Hall Red, which I have found to be a nice undercoat for the Cardinal Flocking, which is surprisingly enough not the name of a Catholic bishop or a Catholic Cardinal, Cardinal Flocking. Here we go, just right up to the edge. Nice and fat, nice and thick. Not uh, too precious about this at all. Right up to the edge. You seeing that? Yeah, it's on camera. Not really paying attention to where the camera is. I'm paying. Oh, hush. Hush, you. Um, but I did turn the fan off because you don't want the fan blowing around your stray fibers. Okay, we're done with that cover that up. There's one thing I noticed Phil was doing that kind of made me nervous is that he had an open can of adhesive next to where he was flocking and I thought maybe he was inviting a catastrophe of getting an errant puff going straight into his can of paint. Okay, so we're done with that. We're done with the brush. We are like I said, I'm done with that brush. Put that to the side. We're going to puff this in here. And I am just going to puff the heck out of it. Nice little twisty motion. Get all four corners. There. Done. That's all there is to it. I will uh, turn this over. See, now you have this nicely locked foot pad. Turn that over. Just a little blow off of there and this is all ready to go back into the bag o flock. There we go. And then we dump what's left in here back in there. And we clean our we clean up after ourselves. This is done. That's done. We, oops, can't do that. There we go. Squeeze the air out of it. There we go. Okay, that's done. This is done. And everything's clean and ready to go. There you go. There's your results. It's just another Flocking Friday. And that's going to do it for week three on the time machine. Um, didn't get the front package closed up like I had hoped, but got a lot of stuff done. A lot of fun stuff. Got a lot of the brain work taken out of it for the uh, the electronics. That's key. Uh, getting that dish done, that is, that that's a big load off my shoulders, having that thing done. And of course, the um, getting that front, the little front of the padding flock, that's going to be fun. Um, Next week is weird. It's 4th of July week. Wayne, happy birthday on the 4th of July. Um, but it, there'll be no mail Friday, uh, Monday. So uh, I'm expecting a couple of things to come. I'm expecting the mechanical parts to come in from Phil. I'm also expecting some replacement electronics, uh, the, the power jacks that I use. I'm out of them. So I need to, I had to order more of those. So I can't really wire up the jack and the uh, switch at the back of the pad of the uh, foot pad or the base uh, that I was hoping to do I was look I was expecting to do that this week but then I looked around and realized I was out I've got plenty of these I got I got plenty of these it's what it plugs into that I'm out of so uh, we'll wait we're not in that big a rush I'm almost at a standstill without without having those mechanical parts anyway I've got a uh, a uh, nice little quickie side project that I've got to take care of this weekend. You hush! I'm going to come down there. Um, but I've got a, a quickie project that I need to take care of this weekend that will get me away from the uh, time machine completely. So until next week, 
Um, I don't know if I'm going to work on Independence Day or not. I might just celebrate and not do any work. So until next time, y'all be good. Be good to each other. Be safe. Be smart. Uh, keep your hands and fingers away from the fireworks. You might need them one day. Um, we'll be back next week and we'll see what other mischief we can get up to. See you then.